Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Hey, look, man. We know that uh, Devin Haney is talking about going up to 140, taking on a fight with somebody if it makes sense. And when, he talk, when we talk about making sense and Devin Haney talks about making sense, we're talking about money, fiat. And let me tell you, We've talked about this in other videos. I'm not going to go that route with what we're talking about today. Devin Haney's looking to get an opportunity at 140 because I just think he wants to give his body a break from making 135. So I would say the consensus is Devin Haney, probably his next fight will probably be at 140. But at 140, right, who would Devin Haney fight? And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of rumblings about Devin Haney and top rank trying to figure out a way to make the Devin Haney Roley Romero fight. Now, I will tell you, the whole WBA fight between Devin Haney and Tia Fimo, if Tia Fimo could beat Josh Taylor or Devin Haney and Josh Taylor, that would be a good fight. But this is the thing. Josh Taylor wants to go to 147. So what you have in Josh Taylor is a guy who's killing himself to make 140, who really should be at 147, 154. So Josh Taylor's in a position kind of like Devin Haney at 135. So him going up to meet Josh Taylor, if because I think Josh Taylor's going to beat Tiafimo, that could be a winnable fight for Haney, although I just don't think he beats him. But if Taylor's body doesn't cooperate on the weight cut, could be interesting. But that being said, the vast majority of feeling like, hey, because of the rumors and rumblings, you know, there's always something going on in this damn boxing world. Take what I'm telling you with a grain of salt because you just never know what's the truth if only the fly on the wall could talk. But word is, man, they're really trying to figure out Rolly Romero and Devin Haney. Now, Devin Haney to go to 140, him being the uh, the unified at 135. There's a lot of flexibility with bubbling up and challenging some of these champions. Okay, but on the WBO, he can go up, up or down a weight division. The WBA, I'll be honest with you, I'm not quite sure that he has that flexibility, but I wouldn't be surprised if he was able to go straight to a shot with Rolly Romero. Now, how does that help Devin Haney? Well, now he becomes a two time champion. Okay, now, how does that help Rolly Romero? Well, I mean, it, it, it doesn't really help Rolly Romero, him fighting Devin Haney. But I think the two of them together would be would do pretty good numbers. But is the money the type of money there that Rolly Romero would want for a, his first fight as a WBA champion? The bottom line is Rolly's going to have to fight somebody with a name to make big money. He may go into a fight and be able to, to demand 70-30 or 80-20 because he has a title. He may be able to do that. But 70-30, 80-20 of what pot of money? 250000 it's not like we're talking about 50 million. Okay? So so Rolly's gonna want to make sure that he's making real life changing money. And I'm not sure Devin Haney can do that for him. But Devin Haney's a big name. And because they spent so much time in the ring, Rolly may feel that that's an easy fight, a winnable fight for him. But based on what we saw with Rolly Romero and his performance against Barroso. Devin Haney is going to let his hands go a lot more. Uh, Devin Haney's going to get behind that jab, and Devin Haney's going to look to outbox Roley. Roley was uh, was struggling with Barroso, and I think Devin's a better fighter than Barroso, but Barroso hits hard. And that has a, a lot to do with, I think, Roley Romero's output, and I would say his uh, less than stellar uh, performance. But nonetheless, a very good fight. Now for Devin Haney. You know, going up and challenging somebody. Again, this stuff is boiling down to money. Now, Devin Haney got a guarantee for fighting. He got a $4 million guarantee to fight uh, Lomachenko. No matter what you think about Roley Romero and Bob Arum, right? I don't see Bob Arum sitting here and, and, and being so naive to where he just feels Devin Haney going up and fighting Rolly Romero is a guaranteed win. 
I think he sees Rolly Romero as the easier fight out of all the champions right now. Now, when I say that, for anyone who disagrees with me, this is why I say that. You look at 140. All right, and just be fair, try not to be biased. When you look at these champions at 140, look at the WBO, Taylor. Could be Tiafimo, okay? But let's just say Taylor and Tiafimo. You think about Devin Haney fighting Josh Taylor or Tiafimo. Who do you have winning that fight? Kind of hard to go and say Devin Haney's going to beat him, right? Devin Haney and Subriel Matias. Who do you have winning that fight? Kind of hard saying De Devin Haney's going to bubble up from 135 to 140 and beat him, right? At the WBC, Regis Progray. Devin Haney, Regis Progray. Who do you have winning that fight? Better not say Devin Haney beats Regis Progray. Now when you got the WBA, Devin Haney and Rolly Romero. Especially based on that last fight he, uh, he had, although that guy could really hit hard. Kind of give you a little bit of a warm fuzzy about making that fight, right? So when you're looking at the matchmaking, Taylor, Tiafimo, Matias, Progre, Romero, and you have to pick one name for Devin Haney to go up at his first fight at 140, especially if he's going up for the fight for a title. Who would be that one name that you picked? And I'm going to tell you, if it was me, it would be, be it would be Roly Romero before Tiafimo. But the problem is, Roly Romero can really crack. And what happens if Roly catches Devin? They've sparred before. They know what each other brings to the table. That's all I'm saying. But if they were to fight, where's the money? You know, and, and that's the thing. You know, matchmaking becomes more and more difficult in the sport of boxing. The more these fighters place their focus, place their, their, their emphasis on how much money am I going to make. Now, I'm not saying they're wrong. What I'm telling you is we as fans can suffer because we're not getting the fights we want to see, but you, you can't blame the fighter for wanting to make as much possible because there's such a short shelf life when it comes to boxing. But Devin Haney, he, at this point in his career, should only be looking at big fights. At 140, he does not have many options. If he wants to go up and fight at 140, he can. He may not keep those belts unless he's going up to challenge a champion. I don't think he can just leave the belts at 135 and just go up and pick anybody he wants to fight at 140. I believe he has to fight a champion, and in particular, uh, WBO to WBO. The other, the other sanctioned bodies, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not 100% on that. I think the WBA may have some kind of flexibility where he can do something, but I, I don't know. I don't want to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. But what I will say is when it comes to Devin Haney, and Roley Romero, that's a that's another one of those fights where you gotta score that you gotta score it minute by minute. Every those three minute rounds scored first minute, second minute, third minute. And I think what you're gonna run into with Devin Haney and Roley Romero, you could run into a situation where the first two and a half minutes, you got Devin Haney out boxing him, looking sharp, and then Roley lands the missile, the bazooka, right hand on him, a left hook. And now Devin Haney is hurt. But it's only one shot compared to the 40 or 30 to 40 shots Devin lands. And now we're back in the same situation where we say, you know, Roley got robbed or Devin Haney maybe got robbed. You know? And that's why I did that video yesterday about scoring. But if they were to fight, I think the buildup would be good because Rolly Romero's already gone on record. You know, he's he's insulted Devin more than anyone else. Other people insult Devin when it comes to, hey, he kind of had the, the undisputed distinction given to him, although he did go fight Cambosos. Cambosos wasn't a strong champion. Stars lined up for Devin Haney. He he, he was, his birthday, came, his, he got his gifts for birth, his birthday and Christmas. He got his presents early. 
But the thing with Rowley, he attacks him. I mean, he, he just says a lot of awful things about Devin Haney, man. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of the stuff is funny, and I get it as boxing, but he he's pretty, he, he pretty relentless with the stuff he says. So I think it'll be a good buildup, a fun buildup. It'll be interesting because Bill Haney, Devin's dad, talks a lot. And Rowley Romero's dad, uh, you know, used to box, and he's very involved in Rowley's career. But I think that buildup would be very interesting, be very fun, because Rowley's crazy. But I just think it's one of those fights where, again, Devin Haney, to me, is going to be in a fight that I think is personally a toss-up. Because he can't, he's not going to try to walk Rolly Romero down. He couldn't even really walk Lomachenko down. But he, he, he's not. But I think he's in a good position if he does decide to go fight Rolly Romero. Because after Rolly Romero got knocked out by Tank, and look how he fought this last fight. Rolly Romero's gone from being a guy who wants to be a KO artist to almost getting to a tickling contest in the ring. You know, and I, I do think the fact that he got hurt by Tank Davis, that has um, that plays on Rolly's mind, as it should. And then he went in with another big puncher. I don't care what anyone says, that guy, the old the old man, the old Venezuelan, that guy could crack, man. Uh, and Rolly and Rolly didn't want to go through that again, so he played it safe. You know, on the outside, kind of, you know, lateral movement and um, striking when he had opportunities. And stars just lined up to him there at the end. Where he well, he did hurt Barroso, and I think he would have knocked him out. But Tony Weeks uh, was quick to insert himself in the secret, secret society, ensured the person they want to win that WBA strap won the strap. But I think he would have won it anyway. But, but that being said, with Devin Haney and Rolly Romero, I don't think Rolly would be as apprehensive because Devin Haney, my understanding is this man can't even, you know what I mean, pop a damn balloon. But it would be an interesting fight, and I think it would be another one of those 50-50 fights that if it goes to the scorecards, it could be another one you have trouble scoring the fight. There are some people, even if I did that video yesterday, who feel if you have one guy who lands one hard shot that sends shockwaves through his opponent, but doesn't stop him, and the other the, and and the guy who got hurt with that one shot was winning the whole round. They still feel that one shot because he did the most damage. That one shot should win him the round. Or other people feel, hey, it's one shot compared to thirty shots landed. That's not fair. So again, you know, whether you say ambiguity or ambiguity, right? The bottom line is, the shit's kind of sketchy and confusing. It's not easy when it comes to judging. That's why you just take it out the judges. Uh, hands and knock your opponent out okay but that being said more to come on Rolly Romero and Devin Haney if they were to fight I'm telling you I'd be all for it but I, I just I just don't see when it comes to this 140 pound division I don't see anyone up here for Devin Haney to go up here and mess around with uh you know when it comes to these champions like outside of Rolly Romero and maybe Tia Fimo. I'm telling you, I, I don't I don't think he needs to mess with Josh Taylor, Matias, or Progre. I just don't think so. I think that's bad medicine if they put him in there with Progre and Matias. And even Josh Taylor, but Josh Taylor, like I said, could be having some weight struggles. But that being said, we'll see what they, they decide to do. But believe you me, if they're making Rowley and Devin to fight before the end of the year, that is going to be exciting, and I think they may do pretty good when it comes to pay-per-view because Rolly Romero is crazy, and he will sell the fight. And look, whether people want to admit it or not, that fight with Lomachenko helped Devin Haney's profile. Whether you support him or not, it, 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 it put his name out there to the world because beating Lomachenko is a big deal. And the more people go back and rewatch the fight, the more people will see that, you know what? It, it wasn't it wasn't a robbery, man, and I thought it was a robbery, but I, I had to go rewatch it, and it's it's different when you rewatch it, man. And De Devin did what he had to do to win that fight, but it was close, it was close, and it just depends if you want to go with the guy flashy shot or shots that knocked the opponent's head back, or the guy who over the, the course of the majority of the round is landing some clean shots and more what single shots, not flurries. It just depends. It's, it's hard to score. But that being said, hopefully the boxing gods will give us this fight. It'll be another exciting fight. 
a good uh, opportunity for Devin to keep bubbling up his profile. But the big the big thing that needs to happen, in my opinion, is Shakur Stevenson's going to have to do something. You know, Bob Arum going to have to fold him and the top-ranked team going to have to form Voltron to get Shakur Stevenson in some high-visibility high fights to bubble up his profile so that he can really go in to a fight with a Tank Davis or a Devin Haney where the whole world knows his name too right now. People, unfortunately, really still really kind of don't know who Shakir Stevenson is. Devin Haney is just not climbing out of obscurity. Tank is already out there to the world, but Mayweather helped him a lot. Uh, being attached to Mayweather helped him a lot. But we'll see if these other two can continue growing their profiles, and we'll see if Devin Haney and Roller Romero get in the ring. I hope so. That being said, keep cool. Shout out to the veterans on seven continents in the breeze.